How do and welcome back. My name is Andrew Hancock and I'm a VMware technical architect from Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. I have worked with the VMware products uh, since their inception in 1998. So that's 23 years I've been working with the VMware product line. Some of you may say if you cut Andy in half, it reads VMware like a sticker rock from Blackpool. I've also written over 100 articles for Experts Exchange and won many other awards and accolades. I am honoured to have been accepted into the VMware vExpert program for the last 11 years and more recently a VMware vExpert Pro for the last two. Welcome back and thanks so much for joining me for another Hancock's VMware half hour. And to conclude this theme of updating our ESXi host servers to 7.0U2A um, we've already actually basically seen in videos that I've done in updating direct from VMware using the Bash shell using ESX CLI. Uh, we've also basically looked at using the Bash shell and the ESX CLI command to actually basically apply the update that we've downloaded stored on a data store. We've also basically gone old school and we've actually basically updated uh, host uh, using an ISO virtual image connected to a virtual CD-ROM drive using a integrated lights out controller um, in a HPE server. So today, finally, I've got another HPE server, a different one. Uh, this one's ESX002. Um, again, it's a HP ProLite microserver. It's a Gen 8. It's running 7.0.1 um, VM kernel release build 1732551. And we actually basically want to update this to 7.0.2A or 7.0U2A. And we're going to do this using a, a new feature, a rebranded feature in vCenter Server 7 called Lifecycle Manager. Um, where we have the ability to apply an image uh, to hosts within a cluster. Very simply. Um, now, I'll cover vCenter Server. It might sound like a scary word. Uh, vCenter Server is a management server that allows you to manage your ESX host servers. And I'll show you in another video how we actually install and how we add our servers to that. But for the time being, I'm going to show you our connection again we use a browser to connect to our vCenter server and our vCenter server shows us a single pane glass of all our ESXi servers. So I'm going to look at this particular cluster here. A cluster effectively is a group of resources, a group of servers. I won't worry about that too much at the moment. But there's our host server, ESXi002. Um, and you can see that it's a VMware ESXi, it's a ProLine microserver Gen 8. It's running 17321551. Uh, I have an iDRAC connection to it so that uh, we can actually basically see it restart and run the new version of the software. Um, so I'm going to actually just very quickly show you how we actually are going to update our server. So I'm going to click the cluster Experts Exchange and I'm going to click Updates. I'm going to click image. I'm going to click setup image. Now this is where it goes off and basically checks the cluster readiness and basically see whether or not that there are any issues. So basically it's I basically I define an image. So I select our 7.0U2A build. Now it actually basically goes off vCenter server and actually basically fetches up-to-date information from VMware. So you don't have to download anything, um, you don't have to update anything, it'll just sit in the background regularly syncing, basically pulling in updates etc from, from, from VMware. We select our vendor add-on, so I'm actually going to select our HPE customization for HPE servers and I'm going to say select. You can actually also select additional firmware and drivers. Now, there aren't any firmware and drivers for the, the ProLiant the ProLiant microserver Gen 8. It's a bit of a mouthful. 
So I'm going to basically just click the validate button. And that's actually basically going to go off and run some checks basically to see that um, the the vibs and the valid the image is valid. And I'm actually going to click save. Now it's actually going to go off and basically check the hardware compatibility list for issues with this server. Now we already know in advance that this server is not on the HCL for 7.0. So it's going to flag that up and it's going to warn us. Um, and this is something obviously that you have to decide within your organization if you are happy to use hardware that is not on the hardware compatibility list. It does obviously um, create a risk for your organization because should you wish to, um, should you wish to raise a support call with VMware in the future, um, it's likely that they'll not support you or help you in any way if your server is not on the HCL. We have actually basically discussed this before. Okay, so there's a lot of yellow there. Um, these hosts are standalone vibs which may be removed or remediated. Okay, please check the compatibility. Yes, I'm aware of that. Uh, there's, it also turns around and says the CP on this host is not supported by the image. Yes, I'm okay with that. Um, it then actually basically also shows us currently ESXi version 7.0 U1C and the build. And this is what we're going to want to go to, uh, 178.67351, which is our 7.0 U2A. Uh, so I'm going to basically just click Finish Image Setup. And I was going to say, yes, Finish Image Setup. I'm just going to sit there for a couple of seconds while it actually basically creates that image specifically for that cluster. Now... You have to make sure here that all your hosts all have the same hardware in the cluster. I, you can't have a mix of Dell and easily have a mix of Dell and HP in the same cluster if you actually basically want to do this. So, okay, so now I can just click run pre-check. And it's just going to basically start compliance check for the cluster, which contains that single host. And if we just put the drop down here, you can actually basically see what it's actually doing. Starting compliance check. Hopefully this shouldn't actually take too long. I'm just going to turn off camera and mic while it's doing this. Oh, hang on. There we go. It's, it's slowly starting, finishing, starting. I'm going to turn off my... Okay, so no pre-check issues found. That's good. So now, how do I actually basically update? Um, well, quite simply, I can click remediate all, which will remediate all the servers in the cluster. We only have one server in our cluster. Or I can basically click actions, remediate. Remediate, posh word for uh, do it, apply, upgrade, so now basically start remediation and that's actually basically going to go off in the background and start doing some tasks. If I look down the bottom here, you can actually basically see that it's starting to remediate the cluster or specifically that single host in the cluster because I only have one host in there at the moment. And I'm going, to, I'm going to turn off the cam and I'm going to turn off the mic whilst it actually does that. Okay, I was flicking back and forth there between iDRAC and the vCenter server connection because I actually basically wanted to catch the point where it actually starts to reboot, but it obviously hasn't. Just thinking about it. There we go. Because what I actually basically wanted to show you was these actual steps here. That These were the steps where we actually basically did a compliance check. That's the point where we basically hit the button and turned around and said remediate, upgrade my server. It automatically put it into maintenance mode. So that's something I don't have to worry about. Uh, it completed entered maintenance mode. Then it started installing the image, i.e. the upgrade update onto our host. It's completed the installing the image and now it's actually starting the reboot. And all I've had to do is create the image for the cluster, 
hit check compliance, remediate it, please. And now if we flick back to our iDRAC console, um, the server is actually basically rebooting. And fingers crossed, we should have an updated server. Uh, so again, I'm just going to disappear. You don't want to listen to me waffling. Um, but something I will say, because a couple of people have actually commented, uh, do I only have one T-shirt? Um, no. Um, <laughs> I've won so many awards at Experts Exchange that I do actually change my T-shirt every day. Um, and they happen to say Experts Exchange. And they look all the same. Um, but you're not actually basically seeing the back. Um, because on the back they're all different. I'm not quite sure whether or not you can actually see that. Um, but the back of the shirt's different. Um, I have won so many awards and titles. I think it was calculated uh, in a recent podcast uh, with Randy and Thomas. I, I think the number's like 39. Um, so just to um, that query that's been raised uh, on, on LinkedIn and Twitter about uh, do I ever change my T-shirts, uh, yes, I do change my T-shirts every day. They just all look the same um, because I've got so many of them. Um, and um, you, can, you can talk to my partner because she's actually basically fed up with the number of Experts Exchange T-shirts that I have in drawers uh, around the house. Um, so there we go. That answers uh, that question. Oh, yes, and I have got long hair and I have got a long beard because it's been like this basically since we went into lockdown from about March 23rd, 2020. So, yes, my hair has grown and my beer has grown as well. Um, so just a couple of comments there that people people have actually basically mentioned. Um, but I'm actually basically going to just disappear and I'm going to let you watch our ESXi host server boot and I'll come back shortly and I'll speed this up in the post edit as well. Okay, and I'm back. Oh, there we go, and there's our Zebra version of ESXi again. Um, just as I have uh, basically start to um, to capture again. I think actually something to do with when I switch in the... Um, I think it's when I switch in the webcam, I think, that it, it does this. But anyway, um, it's not supposed to look like that, as you well know. This is the Zebra version of ESXi, special version here. Um, and if you're watching in colour, um, then that's supposed to be grey over yellow. Uh, so, there we go fantastic um i'm a i'm a great fan of uh i think vcenter server 7 uh and the ability to basically do updates like this using imaging clusters is an absolute godsend and um you know my thanks goes out to vmware engineering really for the these new features that they've actually basically given us that, that, you know in life cycle manager you know they're, they're fantastic you know um it saves us so much trouble with big clusters and big number of esxi servers so if we actually basically go back to um, our vCenter server, uh, you can actually basically see that it's now alive again. It's not in maintenance mode because basically all the heavy lifting is being run by our lifecycle manager. Uh, and you can basically now see from the image compliance last checked on 20th of May, 2021, 7 p.m. ish. Um, all hosts in this cluster are compliant. One host completed. Um, excellent. There isn't any more really that I can show you um, if you have V if you have a license for vCenter server 7 um, and you, you have a cluster and you have you know a handful of servers um, then certainly it is well worth having a little look at the ability to actually basically apply images against your servers only works for 7 though 7.0 um sent to server 7 and and 7 so anyway short one short one this time um i haven't got any more to say today um so you know thanks very much for watching this uh, i hope you've enjoyed it as well how i have um and um look out for more videos in the future uh we'll carry on the hancock's half hour series uh and i'm going to drop back to where i left off and we're actually going to start getting getting jiggy with it uh, and we're actually going to start installing some virtual machines uh, on our on our hosts anyway so all the best take care goodbye from me